A warm greetings to one and all. In this session, let's learn about robust regression. As a part of introduction, let's start with regression analysis. Regression analysis is a fundamental statistical technique used to build the relationship between dependent and independent variable. Here, the image shows the simple linear regression where the straight line, that is the line of regression, is fitted to the data points to the model which represents the relationship between independent variable x and the dependent variable y. Traditional linear regression minimizes the sum of squared residuals which can heavily influenced by the outliers. So this image shows the simple linear regression where the line is fitted to the data points to minimize the sum of the square difference between the actual value y and the predicted values y cap where the actual value y is given in red color and the predicted value y cap is given in green color here. So hope you are clear in this diagram. Robust linear regression is designed to be less sensitive to outliers compared to the traditional linear regression. So here in this diagram, there is an outlier that is a data point that is significantly deviated from the trends of the other points. So it can distort the line of regression by pulling it away from the overall trend as shown in the image like this. Leading to the less accurate model as it increases the sum of square errors that is the distance between the actual and predicted. So this is what the actual and predicted values. Robust linear regression uses a different techniques to mitigate the effect of outlier and produce a more reliable model. In linear regression, the best fit line is usually determined by minimizing the mean square error MSC. It is calculated by 1 divided by n summation of i is equal to 1 to n yi minus yi cap the whole square, which measures the average squares of error between the predicted and actual values as shown in the image. For example, if a data point is at a distance of 1 unit from the predicted line, it contributes an error of 1 unit. So let's check out in this diagram. So these data points is at the distance of one unit from the predicted line. It contributes an error of one unit. So let's consider this point as an outlier of distance 10 units. So squaring this distance results in contributing the error of 100 units. So this is equal to 101 unit errors of the data points. This large error can dominate the total error and Distort the regression line, making it less accurate for the rest of the data. Yes, if you have an outlier in our data, this can result in poor fit as shown in this image right now. So this is the poor fit. To mitigate the impact of outliers, robust regression technique can be used. One common approach is to replace MSC with Huber last function. The distribution in this diagram shows that mean square error which is represented in red color line has quadratic increase in error and make it highly sensitive to the outliers. Whereas mean absolute error which is represented in blue dotted line and the Huber last function which is represented in green dotted lines exhibit linear and hybrid behaviors respectively which are more robust to the outliers. The Huber last function is particularly less sensitive to the outliers because it combines the properties of MSC and MAE in order to reduce the influence of the large errors. To achieve even greater robustness to the outlier, the Gaussian distribution is used in MSC can be replaced by the Laplace distribution which aligns with MAE's approach. Let's explore Huber last function. For modulus of A less than or equivalent to delta, then last function of A which is equivalent to 1 by 2 A square. For modulus of A greater than delta, then last function of A is equivalent to delta into modulus of A minus 1 by 2 delta. The parameter delta controls the point where the last function transitions from quadratic to linear. A smaller delta makes the function behave more like the absolute loss, emphasizing robustness to outlier. The larger delta makes it behave like 
d square glass emphasizing sensitive to smaller errors Huber loss is a hybrid loss function that provides good balance between the sensitive of the square error and the robustness of the absolute error makes it a valuable tool in situation where you want to minimize the influence of outliers on your model let's have an example program for robust regression the given data is at hours steady that is it is represented by x and the values given so 1 2 3 and 4 Next test course. It is represented by y, and the values are two, three, four, and twenty. The predicted value y bar is calculated as beta naught plus beta one into x. The initial values for beta naught and beta one is considered as zero and one. Next, the residual value y is calculated by y minus y bar. Next, the Huber loss function. We are using the constant value one point five for the delta. If a is less than delta, that is 1.5, then we have to use the formula 1 by 2 a square. If a is greater than delta, that is, if a is greater than 1.5, then we have to use the formula delta dot modulus of a minus 1 by 2 into delta. Here, the column represents hour study, that is x value, then test score, that is y value. Next predicted value that is y bar value. Y bar is equal to beta naught plus beta one value into x. The residual value is calculated by a that is y minus y bar. Then we have given the Huber loss condition based on the a value. Then we are performing the Huber loss calculation. So in first step we can consider the values that is first values of x and y that is one comma two. So the value of x is one. The value of y is two. Now we have to find the predicted value, that is y bar value. We you know the value of beta naught is zero and the value of beta one is one, which we have assumed in the earlier step. So one into one is one. Next we have to find the residual value y. So it is given by the formula y minus y bar. Y value is two and y bar value now we have calculated that is one. So two minus one is equal to two. So now we have to find the Huber loss condition. The value of y is one, that is y is equal to one. So one is less than delta value. We know that the delta value which we have assigned earlier is 1.5. So we have to choose the condition that is first condition. If y value is less than delta, we have to use 1 by 2 y square. So that is what we have chosen here. Now we can perform the calculation. So 1 by 2, the y value was 1, so 1 square, which is equal to 0.5. In next step, we have considered the second value of x and second value of y that is 2 and 3 so the x value was 2 and y value was 3 the predicted y bar value was beta beta not value is 0 and beta beta 1 value was 1 into x value that is 2 so we get y dash value was 2 then y minus y cap that is for the value of y so y value was 3 minus y bar value that is 2 so 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 So now again the value of y is one. So one is less than delta, that is one point five. So we are choosing the same condition, that is which we have used in the previous step, that is one by two y square. Since the value of y is similar, we get the same value, that is zero point five. By substituting in the formula, one by two one square is equal to zero point five. Next step, we are considering the third points of x and y, that is three comma four. For x we are having three, and for the y we are having the value four. Now we are finding the predicted value that is y bar based on the beta naught that is zero plus beta one that is one into three that is x value. So now one into three is three. So three is the y bar value. Now we have to find the y value. So that is y minus y bar. Y value is four. Y bar value is three. So four minus three is equal to one. So we are getting the similar value as of the previous step. That is y is equal to one. So again, one is less than the delta value. We know that delta value was 1.5. So the formula which we have to choose, that is the condition which we have to choose for the Huber loss, is similar which we have used in the previous step. That is 1 by 2 a square. So since the a value is also similar to the previous step, the same calculation is being done. That is 1 divided by 2 into a square. That is 1 square is equal to 0.5. The last point which we are considering for x and y is 4 and 20. So x value is 4 and y value is 20. Now we are finding the predicted y bar value. So we know that beta naught value is 0, beta 1 value is 1 multiplied by the x value that is 4. So now the y bar value is 1 into 4 is 
Next, we are calculating the residual A value that is done by Y minus Y bar. Y value is given as 20 and Y bar value is given as that is calculated as 4. So 20 minus 4 is equivalent to 16. So here A value is 16 which is greater than the delta value. Since the delta value is 1.5, A value is greater than. So we have to move to the second condition. If A value is greater than delta, then we have to use the formula delta dot modulus of A minus 1 by 2 into delta. So we can see here how we have substituted the values. So delta value is 1.5 into modulus of A, that is A value was 16. So 16 minus 1 by 2 into delta. So the value is 0 0.75. So if you calculate this uh, equation, we get the value 22.875. So using the numerical optimization techniques such as gradient descent function to minimize the objective function and to find the optimal beta naught and beta 1 values, which means that. So now in this step, we have considered it as beta naught as 0 and beta 1 as 1. So what we have to do is we have to change this beta naught value and beta 1 value for the next step. And we have to find the Huber-Lass value. And this is not done for one or two times. It is done for several iterations. So we will find the best fitting parameters for beta naught and beta 1. So in this case, we have found that beta naught value is 4.5 and beta 1 value is equal to 5.0 after several iterations. So Huber loss, uh, sorry, Huber regression line function is being given as y is equal to minus 4.0 plus 5.0 into x value. So hope you are clear in this example problem. Thank you all.